and just wave at some people. That's what we're not going to get any after that. Just stand and wave and remain standing for our for our cross. yesterday and I'm borrowing it and I kind of made a couple changes of my own but I'm kind of borrowing from what I heard yesterday um, there's a form of writing that's known as an acrostic I'd never heard that before but it's where the first letter of each line if you read down it spells a word and so the word today that I'm going to uh, use is the word prayer so starting with the letter P, the letter P stands for power. When we pray, there is tremendous power in our thoughts. R stands for restore. P 
Prayer helps restore our inner peace and our inner understanding. A stands for attention. Prayer brings attention to the little things in our life that are meaningful and important. As we've all put our lives in a sort of holding pattern due to the pandemic, things that we thought were important have turned out to be unimportant and our focus has shifted to other more basic things that bring us greater joy. The letter Y is for yes. We have to say yes. Yes, we can. Yes, we can change. Yes, we can be happy and healthy every day of our lives. And yes, tomorrow is a new day. E is for eternal. Our life here on earth is short, but with Jesus, we have eternal life. The final letter is R and stands for return. Um, we've all heard the phrase, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. We were all born with an expiration date, and when that day comes, we hope to be returned to heaven. Our time on earth is made up of lessons, lessons that are meant to make us better human beings, lessons such as forgiveness, compassion, and tolerance of others, gratitude for what we have, and the ability to show kindness as Jesus showed kindness. The pandemic has taught us that life can change in an instant. Life as we knew it will never be what it used to be, but that doesn't mean that things are hopeless. Look to the future with excitement and know all things are possible, especially through prayer. If you'll please bow your heads and pray with me. Holy God, we are so thankful that your ears are always open to our prayers as you listen to the concerns of our hearts. Please help us find quiet in the noise of every day. Help us stay in the moment and feel more connected to you. We know that we are not alone as you help us keep life in perspective with the understanding that you are there for us. And if you'll continue to pray with me as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the power and the kingdom and the glory forever. Amen.
United Methodist Church. I come to you from quarantine today. That even though I have had a negative COVID test, the CDC guidelines still require that since I have uh, had an exposure by their definition, that I have to do a full 14 days in quarantine. So I'll be quarantined all the way until Tuesday. Um, I'm sure the folks who are in the sanctuary didn't think that the coming today they would have a message recorded, but. That's the world that we live in right now as we all come in and out of quarantines and we make the adjustments that we need to make. We work with what we're dealt, right? So uh, this Sunday, we are in what is the third of the series that we've started entitled Living in the Sacred Ordinary. And I want you to hear today's scripture. And today's scripture comes from the book of Acts and this is chapter 11, verses 25 and 26. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. And so it was that for an entire year, they met with the church and taught a great many people. And it was in Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, I invite you to hear these words. We assume the really serious changes in our lives happen slowly over time, but it's not true. The big stuff happens in an instant. Becoming an adult, becoming a parent, becoming a doctor. One minute you're not, the next you are. Ask any doctor and they can point to the moment they became a physician. And it usually isn't med school graduation day. Whatever it is, nobody forgets it. If you're a fan of the television show Grey's Anatomy, then you probably recognize that quote from Meredith Grey as she muses and shares an astute observation from life about how we experience the big changes in our life. And that the recognition of changes that take place over a sweep of time, the recognition of that change happens actually in a moment. Um, an example of that that maybe most of us could relate to would be when our fathers raised the training wheels on our bicycles. And so we spent weeks riding around tipped over this way or tipped over that way until suddenly, without uh, uh, knowing the exact moment that it took place, suddenly we realized, hey, I'm not riding on the training wheels anymore. I'm not tipped over. And all the millions of muscle movements that it takes to balance on two wheels, I'm not thinking about them anymore. I'm just doing them. And uh, there's a, a change that takes place and we recognize it in a moment, even though the change took place over a sweep of however long it took you to learn how to ride a bike. That television episode ends with this quote. It says, you never forget the moment you became a doctor. A switch flips, suddenly you aren't playing dress up anymore. You own the white coat. Now there are lots of moments in our lives that are threshold moments. 
Uh, and many of those threshold moments are marked with official markers. Like the, you know, we become an adult at our 21st birthday. We are married as soon as we join hands and exchange vows. We are a parent as soon as the baby's born. And uh, we have all these marker points, but we may not always feel like the change has taken place at the marker points. Uh, you know, our 21st birthday, that's the moment we become an adult, but you know, and we can take our driver's license and go to the bar, you know, whatever, and, and prove that we're an adult, but we might not feel in that moment that we are an adult. You know, that might come later, or it may have already come, and that it may not be until we find ourselves doing the ordinary things that adults do that we realize suddenly, hey, I'm an adult. You know, maybe it's after we've gone through a couple books of checks and we realize, wow, I'm self-sufficient and I actually make more than I spend. <laughs> or for uh, parents, you know, perhaps you don't, didn't feel like a parent uh, immediately at the childbirth, that maybe it wasn't until later when you were doing the ordinary things the parents do that you realized, hey, I'm a parent. You know, maybe it wasn't until you could change a diaper and talk on the phone at the same time that you realized, hey, I'm doing this. <laughs> I'm a, really am a parent. Or perhaps for uh, those who are married, that maybe at the moment of your wedding, you didn't feel you know, significantly changed, that maybe you didn't feel like a, a, a husband until later on when you were doing ordinary things that couples do. You know, maybe it was after a while when you noticed, hey, I don't close the bathroom door anymore when I go to the bathroom. You know, or maybe it was the first time you farted in the car while she was riding with you and it just didn't seem to matter anymore. You know, ordinary things. And you know, that's suddenly where we recognize that, oh, I have changed. There comes a moment when we realize that we really have become the role. It's like Meredith Gray says. It's like a switch flips and suddenly you're not playing dress up anymore. You own the white coat as you do the ordinary things that that role does. Today's scripture reading comes from a period in the life of the early church when they were just doing a lot of ordinary living of life together. This passage doesn't come from a big Pentecost moment. It doesn't come from a miraculous escape from prison. It doesn't come from a time where the church was praying and the ground shook or any of that. It comes out of just ordinary meeting Sunday after Sunday after Sunday and doing the ordinary things that church does. You know, I'm sure, the, I'm sure the small groups were meeting and the china painters were painting and the knitters were knitting and the women were meeting in their circles and the men were having breakfast and all the ordinary things that go on in the life of the church. You know, there is a wonderful ancient letter that has survived and it's a letter by Justin Martyr who was one of the very early church fathers and it was a letter to the Roman emperor in defense of of the Christian faith. The Roman Empire had gotten suspicious of Christians and uh, Justin Martyr wrote this letter to try to defend the existence of the church to the emperor. And one of the, one of the uh, ways that he defends the church is to try to show how ordinary it is. And here's what he writes. He writes, on the day called Sunday, all who live in cities or in the country gather together in one place. And the memoirs of the apostles or the writings of the prophets are read as long as time permits. Isn't that a great way to say that? The memoirs of the apostles. Of course, that's the gospels. The gospels and the prophets are read as long as time permits. Then when the reader has ceased, the president, I've never heard of the one presiding over the church to be called the president, but the president verbally instructs and exhorts to the imitation of these good things. So what he's saying in that paragraph is we gather on Sunday from the cities and from the towns and the country and we gather and we listen to the gospels, we listen to the prophets, and at the end of that, the presiding elder encourages us to incorporate that into our lives. And then he goes on. Then we all rise together and pray 
And as we before said, when our prayer is ended, bread and wine and water are brought, and the president in like manner offers prayers and thanksgiving according to his ability, and the people assent, saying, Amen. And there is a distribution to each, and a participation of that over which thanks has been given. And to those who are absent, a portion is sent by the deacons. So he's describing communion. So in the first paragraph, he's speaking about uh, their gathering and the reading of the scriptures and uh, to incorporate that in our lives. And then he speaks about communion and how we, you know, we gather, we take communion, and we uh, take communion to the people who weren't able to be there. It is just ordinary life. I think that it's really astounding that one of the arguments make that Justin Martyr makes to the emperor about the church is, look how ordinary we are. Really incredible. Our scripture text reads, and it says that it was for that entire year they met, they would be Paul and Barnabas, for an entire year they met with the church and taught a great many people. And it was in Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. And so somewhere in that ordinary year, the church looked around and said, hey, we're doing it. The training wheels are off the ground. We're Christians. And it wasn't in all of those big exhilarating moments in the church that they recognized that they weren't playing dress up anymore. It was in the extended ordinary that they discovered that they owned the white coat, so to speak. You know, if we look to the world of cooking for a metaphor to describe the change that take, takes place through a repeated ordinary, I think the metaphor for that would be marinating. You know, marinating is not very exciting. It doesn't involve sizzling pans or flambéing or rolling pins or, uh, you know, double boilers. All it requires is contact time. And isn't that what all of us are really longing for? right now. Don't we just desire to be together and to be in contact with each other and to be in the same place and just have uh, the ability to be together in our churches with each other in an ordinary way, in contact with each other. If this coronavirus has uh, shown us anything, that it is the value of a Sunday after Sunday after Sunday being together. You know, as meat sits in a marinade, there's a chemical process that takes place and there's a flavor transfer that happens. And of course, marinade is about as ordinary as it gets and it is just waiting in the presence of the marinade. But while waiting in a marinade, a really tough and not so good cut of meat can be transformed into something that is really wonderful. There are times in every congregation where it seems like we are just waiting, like we're just marinating in the pews for Sunday after Sunday and nothing is happening. And I know during this time of coronavirus and all these online services that just Sunday after Sunday, it just feels like we're just waiting for something to happen. It feels like we're just marinating for that, you know, 50 or so minutes online each Sunday. And, and, and but, but trust me, <laughs> it may feel like nothing is happening, we're just waiting, but something really is happening in all of that, even, even this long waiting, that there's a transfer of the flavor of the Holy Spirit into your life. And if it hasn't already come in your life, there will come a moment when it'll feel like a switch flips and you'll notice that you're not playing Christian anymore <laughs> and that you own the white coat and you'll hear words coming out of your mouth that you don't recognize as your own, as you will be speaking the words of scripture. Now, they may not be chapter and verse number, but out of your mouth will come the ethics of the kingdom of God. And it will be God's word and the scriptures that will guide your speech and guide your actions rather than just the reflex of responding to the world in the world's way. If it hasn't already come, there'll come a moment when you'll say, hey, I'm doing it. I'm living by faith that the Christian training wheels are off the ground 
and I no longer have to uh, think about all of those millions of, of faith reactions and how do I respond in faith, that you just will be responding in faith as you uh, no longer uh, uh, are learning to be Christian, but you are. And that will be uh, given to you and transferred to you through the Holy Spirit that will be working within you. And I hope that if it hasn't already happened, that someday it will, and that you might lift your head and you might say that it was at Christ United Methodist Church where I was first called Christian. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, let the church say, amen, amen. This is the part of worship where we have the great honor of, of being a Christian, being a follower of Jesus Christ. By We are not passing collection plates because of, uh, of the protocols. There are plates in the back. If you have not already uh, shared your offering, you can do that on the way out. But at this point, let's, uh, well, one other thing. Those of you who are at home, there's a graphic up to remind you how you can share and present your offerings and tithes as well. Let's bow our head for a prayer. Most gracious God, we thank you for this time of, of worship. We thank you for just the opening of our hearts and we ask the Lord just to accept what we share with you this morning out of gratitude, out of thanksgiving, out of joy that you have been a part of our lives. We ask that you bless this offering and use it for the furtherance of your kingdom and your reign. In your name we pray. Amen. a pen and a page and I started writing just what I'd say if we were face to face I tell you just what you mean to me tell you these simple truths be strong in the Lord and never give up hope you're gonna do great things I already know God's got his hand on you, so don't live life in fear. Forgive and forget, but don't forget while you're here. Take your time and pray. These are the words I would say. find you where you are I know cause I've already been there so please hear these simple truths be strong in the Lord and never give up hope you're gonna do great things I already know God's got his hand on you so live life in fear forgive and forget but don't forget
Thank you for being here with us today. We ask your blessing to, uh, uh, as we leave this place, we ask that you would stand. Would you please stand? Would you please stand? We're going to ask you to stay in your place during the final part of our worship until the ushers come and, and, uh, and uh, dismiss you. If you wish to have a, spend some time together visiting, please do that outside, uh, past the doors, and uh, maintain that right social distancing, and everything will be fine. We thank you folks that are uh, worshiping with us at home. If you're wanting to be here next week, we need to ask you to register again. So, with that said, our benediction. May God's grace and mercy be with you this day and every day. May you know and hear God's voice and be that common, everyday follower of Jesus Christ that can do so much. And God's, may God's peace go with you. Amen. Some week.